Hey guys, have you ever heard of the Hegland Coast here in Norway? Nope, we hadn't either. And in fact, our plan after leaving Trondheim was to get on the E6 and spend a couple of days blasting up to Lofoten. But my goodness me, we're so glad we took a detour left and started to explore this incredible, incredible coastline. Let's go back to earlier this week on Monday when I stumbled across a pretty perfect park up. Not too shabby. And it's quite often the case, a complete surprise find as well. I was just looking for somewhere that would allow us sort of first thing on a Monday morning to start our journey up the coaster road. But we've come here, there's a shower, albeit cold water, a loo, little kind of rest picnic area. You can stay two days, voluntary contribution, a lovely little bay to have a dip in. Now, we are hoping to do a little bit of exploration on this island, but maybe not until the rain passes. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to come, kind of come over us, but it does say the heaviest rain is due this morning. So I think we're going to hunker down in the van for a couple of hours and then go and explore. Norway just continues to go. It's beautiful. Well, we have decided to bring ourselves out of the van. It's been a bit of a bit of a miserable day weather-wise today. We um, were stuck in with the rain shortly after that little piece of the camera, and then we tried to go out later on in the afternoon to on the bikes and what we thought was lovely pristine sandy bays turned out to be just farmland. We did go and see a viking barrow though, that was exciting. We just actually a burial site of a big ship which is just some grass in a ditch. They don't actually know whether it is or not, <laughs> they've never actually scientifically uncovered it but anyway and then the rain came back on again. So I've been a bit grumpy all day so. So we decided there's a little hike uh, very close to where in fact we can actually see our park up. We've been here a couple of days now. It is a lovely place to, to park up. And if it was beautiful weather, you couldn't wish for a nicer place actually. It's lovely. Yeah. But yeah, we're looks like we're getting quite close to the top of this little hike. It's only 170 meter climb and a K each way, so it should be grand. Got a few little steep bits. Yeah, it should be fun. It's gonna be fun on the way back means slithering down. down. You see the top? It's got bear caves as well. Well they're probably not bear caves but they look like bear caves. Yober! <laughs> Yober so I think that's us now at the top, where apparently we will have 360 degree panoramic views. We're just in a little very small bowl at the moment, but wow, what stunning views. And it's only taken us about 20 minutes to get up here. Turn it small. <laughs> it's my Instagram face that was. That actually might be the Hurtigurten out at sea. Oh, look at that. I should cut all of your moans and groans oh. and sell it on the dark web. Now this, this is beautiful. The views out towards the sea with a light. I think that is the Hurtigurt. Hurtigurt, Hurtigurt, Hurt There we go. We're at the peak. I'm up. She's the top of the world. Well guys, that has been beautiful up here. We've actually just been sitting talking to a runner who's come up here with his dog. You do always meet really interesting people when you go on a hike. You do, you do. Right, well we are going to make the probably quite treacherous <laughs> journey back down again, back down to the van. It was and only 30 minutes to get up here but I reckon it'll be a bit longer to get back down. <laughs> and I guess we'll catch up again tomorrow as we continue on the coastal road here in Norway. But what we've seen so far, yeah lovely, rather beautiful. Mm -hmm. See you in the morning. Well, good evening. Been a bit of a slower paced day today. Had a lovely run around that campsite last night. Did our shopping. Oh, by the way, I have a lurker. And we were going to do a hike, which is actually in the distance here. But the weather again today was a bit, it's a bit suspect. So we're going to do that tomorrow. But actually where we've come to tonight is again only about an hour's drive from where we were. And another fantastic park up. Kind of a, a loo, lovely little sort of camping area. These are just wonderful and it really does make it nice and relaxed when you come to somewhere like this and of course lovely bay as well, tide starting to come in. But yeah a bit of a quieter day today but hopefully some proper hiking to be done tomorrow including out in the distance a pretty special hill here on this on this chain of islands. I'm still being glared at by someone up there. 
Ooh, I think she needs fed. I've been on the hunt for otters because it's absolutely perfect otter territory, but not a sign. And also, I believe there's a fossum over there, a small fossum, but there's barbed wire I couldn't find a way through. So oh, denied. No fossum tonight. Story of my life. <laughs> well, we shall catch up tomorrow when, as I say, hopefully a bit, bit better weather and a few hikes to be done. I reckon it's chocolate time. Well, good morning, guys. And what a change in the weather today. Would love to have recorded something this morning from that lovely little park up, but... Midge attacks. Yeah, there were. <laughs> with, the, with the beautiful weather and the calm winds come the midge. So we've driven about half an hour uh, across some lovely... You can really see, if you look on a map where we are, this area of um, the coastal route is really splintered. Lots of little fissures, lots of little kind of islands. And you can really tell that as you're driving, as you pass over some fantastic bridges and through some water in inlets. But we've come to Torghappen, completely not pronounced like that, as we heard from a Norwegian lady about 10 minutes ago. But actually, normally we're looking to get, I'm not quite sure whether I just put my finger up Nicola's <laughs> nose. We're looking to get up there. Normally we're looking to get up top, but actually Torque Hatton has got another little special feature which actually we could just barely make out from our park up last night. So we're going to go along to there. Looking at the map, the access to the top might actually be closed unfortunately, but um, we'll go along to the little special feature that this little nubbin has. And then that's that's still too early. <laughs> still too early. And it's only one cup of tea, so this could be a very little a very quiet walk. Yeah. Let's get going. Yeah, so what this nubbin of a hill is famous for is a huge big hole through the centre of it. Actually reminds me a little bit of the Devil's Eye that we first visited in northern Spain a couple of years ago. I'm really scratching this. Still got those midges, bites everywhere. Yeah, we just haven't washed in a couple of days, that's what it is. <laughs> right, looks like we gotta climb some steps. Joy! Where's the heart? Something a bit on the way up. <laughs> yeah, short, steep climb. Now, from the car park, that's only been 0.9 of a mile, as you can see, we are approaching the, the top, but the views actually out the sea are, are really beautiful. Just make sure you can jump in a kayak and paddle all around them. Yeah, all of the, the little splinters that you have, it's if you're a, a kayaker, which, which this one. And it's such a lovely calm day. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it takes a bit more persuasion to get you in a kayak, doesn't it? <laughs> As an Irishman, I've seen Titanic, but I guess at some point we're going to start moving up the final few steps. And I think the view from the other side is even more impressive or so have been told by the trolls. Here we go up the final few steps. Now she's got her mic on, you can probably hear her puffing and puffing. <laughs> I'm not too bad at the moment. <laughs> I'm taking it steady. Almost like a scene from an Indiana Jones movie. Oh, Mum Shira and all that. And this is where you have the, the window under the world. Ah, oh, pants. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether there's been a rock slide or something but you should be able to get up to the, the actual the hole up there, but they've actually closed it off. <laughs> oh. Which I guess if it has been a rock slide, hmm, interesting to go in. Yeah, it does, it does look like it might have been. Oh, that's real It's a shame. bit inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> damn you, Mother Nature. Actually, no, not damn you, Mother Nature. No, don't, we're, don't go saying that. Not we we're, love you. We love you, Mother Nature. We do love you, Mother Nature. <laughs> right, we might as well wander on up to the rock slide then. Now there's all manner of legend and lore as to how this was created. I'll let you guys do your own little bit of research. What, because you don't actually know? Uh, um, we're being denied. Normally be able to walk up these steps and then obviously get stunning views up over the hole, but we have been denied. Slightly disappointing. Yeah. I'm now very envious of the little three-year-old that I saw had a picture on the internet right by the hole. <laughs> I didn't get one. Damn you three-year-olds. Right? <laughs> we don't mean that either. <laughs> I guess mosey back down again. I, I, so. I mean, yes, it's disappointing if we can't get up to the hole. It's still a really nice walk-up. But it's up, a very impressive yeah. walk-up. Easy underfoot, definitely easy for the families as a three-year-old picture that's making her jealous will attest to. And the cave's really nice, actually, and interesting. Yeah, so lovely. even for that, it's worth it. Right. 
They might have finished the cafe by the time you come in anyway. Cafe? <laughs> That's what I think they're building. Back down again, I guess. Speaking of coffee. So we've actually brought ourselves into the village, which is about a 15 minute drive from the hike we've just done. And I think we mentioned, or I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in the costings, obviously we go to campsites once a week. We try to limit it now to once a week. And that's normally to get access to a laundry. Now at the campsites, quite often, the showers are not included. We actually find here down by the marina, and we find this now a couple of times. So worth knowing, there's the little marina kind of service area. And for a hundred knock, uh, you get 24 hours access to the area, which has got a washing machine for use for free and also showers. So actually from a, a bang for buck, and in fact, you could, sorry, just watching my coffee boiler, you could actually stay in around here for free as well. So for a hundred krona, that's at about 750, um, you get 24 hours access to showers, toilets, and two washing machines. So much more worth it. I'll put a little link, got three words link around. So definitely worthwhile knowing about if you're in the area, right? Coffee time. Well, good morning, guys. So we have come across to another island, beautiful ferry crossing last night, actually one of the longest we've taken. Sadly, I forgot to take my camera up on board, so it was only a little bit of iPhone footage. And then we parked up not far off the ferry and such a stunning, stunning evening last night. Some of the nicest light that we have seen. A bit more, a bit more overcast <laughs> today, but we brought ourselves down to Vega Trapa, which is some famous steps. Unfortunately though, there's a bit of a kind of cartel going on in terms of the parking. <laughs> The, the local guy here, I think, has put up a height barrier so you can't get the, the van into the free car park. And he charges either 200 krona to stay overnight, no facilities, or 75 krona for it's about six quid for um, daytime parking. There are a few knobbly bits along the way, but I don't think we'll We be. didn't want to risk putting the van yeah. in. So in now it's VIPs payment. So mm. we've had to put a, a note saying, no VIPs, we'll pay on return. So we'll probably come back and he'll have stolen, stolen our wheels. Right. I hear there's some steps involved in this. Get up those stairs. Many, many stairs. Right, let's get going. Well, I almost fell over the first one. So we are walking up the, the steps, as we said. There is another way to the top, and that's along this path, and that gets you to the start point of the Via Ferrata. Very famous, very popular in, in Spain. And how much? That's 75, that's about 230. Wow, 230. This is good, the bejeebies out of yourself. So we've spoken about this before, you know how much. At some point, we're gonna get our own dog and it's gonna be a little dash hound. God bless you, Beans. Nicola found one down here, look. God, I just didn't realize my own size, I'm falling over. <laughs> I've literally fallen over. I forgot I had my backpack on. Hey, Bye, Beans. I want him. Actually, we've got a different name for our sausage dog, but. Oh. That's the second time I've tripped so far. And we've still got 14,645 steps to go. The sculptures all the way around here are just beautiful, and we've actually come across. We first saw white-tailed sea eagles. Oh, he's going to fall over. We first saw white-tailed sea eagles in Scotland. And apparently there were some white-tailed sea eagles here. They've even got a little sculpture off their eggs. They wouldn't really be that big, their eggs, would they? How would that come out of them? <laughs> I take it they're not life-size. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just do a little bit of a comparison. <laughs> Put your hand on one of those white-tailed sea eagle eggs. <laughs> yes, we're now back into the Jurassic period. I was to say they look more like Velociraptor or T-Rex eggs or something. This is fairly tough going on the old thighs. But what a fantastic walkway. Some of the little flatter bits, and then you're straight back into the steps again. Who needs a stair machine? And actually, it's a bit disorientating as well when you look down. Because there is maybe a three or four foot gap, just show you. Probably won't come out too well on the camera, but if you easily suffer from vertigo, then you might want to keep your eyes straight forward. And here's a nice little flatter resting bit. Right, I reckon this is the final few steps up. That is tough, 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 tough. 
nice spot of big eagle. Oh wow. Wow, wow, wow. I swear this is harder than Ronsel Sagan or whatever it's called. I should have done all those squats years ago. <laughs> this is not easy. Every time I think I'm getting fit, something proves me that I'm not. That was aerobically and thighly hard. Shall we, we did it. <laughs> should we go say hello to the big bird? I think we should. And we're going to assume that over this edge, there's going to be some lovely, lovely views. Oh yeah, not too shabby guys. Oh. Not too shabby, eh? That's nice. Oh wow, and I haven't even seen half of it. Oh wow. This would have been lovely last night at sunset. Oh, it would have been amazing. Would have been stunning. That's a mistake on us. Oh, it's still beautiful though. I mean, come on. Let's show you some of the views. Well guys, that has been beautiful. So worth it, yeah. absolutely worth it. Just, just, Nicola was just mentioning the amount of islands that are out there. There must be thousands, literally. And apparently there are some of the islands that are still inhabited, mostly now just summer holiday homes, but quite often one family on an island. What a way to get away from everyone. That sounds like... Unless you want to get away from your family. <laughs> but you know, this has been beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The only downside, not seeing it at sunset, but yeah. it's been so peaceful up here. And if the sun had been out, I think the water, it looks incredible, even on an overcast day, but it would have been stunning, I think. But you know what? It's not windy, it's not raining, it's not mobbed with people. Exactly. It could be a lot worse. I could literally sit up here all day and just look around. It's so it's beautiful. Stunning. Yeah, sure. We didn't bring a coffee up. Yeah, you know, we never properly prepared. And this is Sola here, which actually looks like it's got a curran on top of it. So I'm assuming get a little got a little hut out there as well. So you might even be able to stay out there. I say the crazy thing about Norway is, <laughs> and that's why we're travelling so slowly. Everywhere you go, you could spend a week. And that, I'm not over-exaggerating mm. that. You could spend a week. You could come here. I wouldn't pay the cartel boss the, <laughs> the money for the campsite, mind you. But you could come to this island, and especially when you're kayak and stuff, and spend a week. It's just incredible. You need probably five years to truly explore oh, Norway. Absolutely, yeah. Come live here. <laughs> Bring lots of beer tokens. Yeah. <laughs> right, time for some steps down. Should be easier, hopefully. Indeed, indeed. Although I have a habit of falling down when I'm going downstairs. And we'll catch up later on today. <laughs> this was a Vega Trapper. Do it. So good morning again, guys. Friday morning. And after our natural step machine yesterday at the Vega Trapper, we brought ourselves to the other side of the island. And we've just been chilling out here for the last 24 hours. Did a bit of work yesterday. And we're out this morning for a nice run. And again, it's another one of these kind of little community sort of approved campsite bits. Um, it's got a really nice, that's the thing, they're all drop toilets, but they're all they're all really nice inside, curtains and everything. Um, I for a run this morning, a little bit more work. And then there is a, uh, a coastal walk. Now this coastal walk actually, if you did the whole thing, would take us all the way back around to Vega Trapper. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna to walk to apparently what is quite a nice swimming spot and maybe go for a little bit of a dip there, but just lovely. Now we've noticed that Farmer Joe has put up a sign saying no camping this weekend because there's an event and it looks like there's kind of makeshift goalposts going up and volleyball nets so it looks like there's some kind of sporting event going on but we think we'll, we'll be fine staying tonight again and we'll just get out of the out of here early doors tomorrow morning but yeah beautiful unfortunately again quite a, a greyish day but quite mild and looking forward to a nice little coastal walk but first of all looking forward to a very nice cup of coffee so our airing our washing and apologies for Nicola saying good morning with her butt. I'm cutting my hair. <laughs> oh goodness me. This made this go one of two ways. We've only been walking five minutes and we've kind of found a little bay. But I'm not sure this is it. And of course, I then was looking at the map and I was going, yeah, it was up around this bit somewhere. I didn't even look. I didn't even look at the map. It's a bit whiffy, this beach though. Not sure I want to dip on this one. What's that? That's an eagle. Is it? Oh, I think my bins. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, look. That's a white tailed sea eagle right oh. there. I've been carrying them around for two days. Not a thing. And it's gone. 
Oh yeah, I did say this hike was a little bit challenging as well, so. <laughs> challenging, as I said. So man down guys, or woman down I guess, um, Nicola has decided to beat a hasty retreat. This is, apart from heights, this would be her least favorite terrain. It's really sketchy and I seem to have lost the, I'm not even sure whether this is the path or not. Oh, maybe the path's a bit more into the, into the woods behind me here, but yeah, that was a little bay over here that we were just at. And we started to walk across just basically boulders and some of them loose and it all started to get a little bit a little bit sketch so Nicola's gone back and to be fair the amount of time it's taken me just to sort of navigate over here I doubt whether I'm going to get very far as well but I'll go along another little bit and see whether we can get to this bay even though that might be the bay that was listed on the map as a nice swimming spot it's beautiful it's stunning and the water is calm and again I think I've said this before if you were a kayaker Oh, this, this area would just be your absolute heaven. So I went completely the wrong way. <laughs> completely missed the little red markers. And I've been walking out this way probably for about 45 minutes, round trip in total. We'll start following these red markers, but this one might even defeat me as well. Plus, Nicola just texted me and reminded me that she went back with the water and the snacks. Anyway, let's see whether this end it opens up into a, a slightly less ankle breaking pathway. So I've actually come up to, I think one of the highest points on the trail, but I think I'm gonna turn back around. Obviously lack of water, lack of snacks, although I have got plenty of supplies to feed off, but yeah, lack of water. Plus, I'm pretty sure that the little sort of bathing bay is probably another hour and a half, maybe another hour's walk on. And given the fact that I've been going for two hours because I went the wrong way, I think with an hour's walk back to the camp, I think I'll, I'll call it quits there. But it's beautiful here, actually. And the trail actually does make a bit more sense once you find the start of it. Nicola did send me the, the GPS coordinates to the start of the trail. But yeah, it's, it would be a really beautiful trail to do and spend all day. Or if you had two cars, for whatever reason, put one here and put one. In fact, this ends up at the... Um, the cartel's car park, so <laughs> maybe maybe don't park your car there. Actually, we did, we ended up not paying. We ended up um, just clearing off because there was no one there to pay. So we're going to take that six quid and we're going to put it in a charity box somewhere. Let the animals have it. Oh, and I'm also getting eaten alive. I actually felt something biting me and I looked and there was a little pinprick. Oh, they're all over me. Right, about an hour's walk back and then I reckon it'll be a cup of tea and a chalky bicky. Oh, what a beautiful spot though. I think the rest of the day we're just gonna chill out and relax. I guess we'll catch up tomorrow. The Hegeland coast is beautiful. Well, good morning again, guys. So we left our lovely little park up this morning before the, the throngs of kids come down. And as you can see, we, we swapped a beautiful, tranquil park up for one slightly less glamorous. We had to do our, um, our shopping. And then we decided to, well, we were coming across onto the, the mainland again. Didn't realize there was only uh, one or two ferries a day. And so by the time we got down, really, really busy ferry. But once again, taking these ferries sort of between the islands is almost a, a little adventure in themselves and it was so so calm so lovely so brought ourselves onto the mainland now now I had hoped to get across to Donna uh, in the next couple of days and climbed the the mountain there Donna Manor Donna Manon um someone wasn't I'd already wimped out looked far too tricky but the weather over the next couple of days looks pretty bad and it does say do not attempt this if it has been raining because it gets very slippery. So that may be one that has to kind of fall by the wayside. The weather for the next couple of days is looking decidedly dodgy. 
So it might just be a case of slowing our horses a little bit. And I've found a cinema which is showing the new Indiana Jones tomorrow evening. So, so I think, we might try and do that. I think that's maybe what we're going yeah. to do tomorrow. And then by Tuesday, it looks like the weather's going to be a little bit better. But we've actually brought ourselves to the Peter Das Museum. Now, we're not going to go in there. Well, you walked in and then I was like, it's 12 quid each. Walked straight, <laughs> walked straight back out. It was like, I think it was a famous Homer Simpson thing where he's in and he's back out again. And I'm like, I don't even know who the guy is. Although, this is little memorial and he looks quite smug with himself. So maybe he was somebody pretty cool. But well, I'm so uncultured. I know, I know. Right, well, we're going to probably explore this area. It's lovely, actually. Might go for a little bit of a hike. And we're back on the hoof. Nicola is wondering why this is given the grading of very easily family fun. Norwegian easy is perhaps slightly more difficult than, oh, she's puffing and panting up there. But from the car park, which is only about five minutes away, you're already getting some beautiful views. And then behind me here, this is the most southern of the Seven Sisters. Again, another famous mountain range in, the, in this area that some people actually do in a, in a day, hike up all Seven Sisters. I think we'll be doing that today. So it turns out Norwegian easy equals British moderate. <laughs> there's definitely, there's lots of British people who would not get up that first bit. Right, so this is a Fjellvjettet? Fentfjellet. Fentfjellet. Little easy bimble up a nubbin of a hill. Well guys, that is us almost at the top, a few metres away from it. It was a tough wee jaunt up actually. It was, I've just had a massive blood sugar crash. So I think maybe it was after the cinnamon bun I had a couple of hours ago. Oh, I've just had to stock up on nuts. Nothing nuts in front of the camera. <laughs> we even get a bit of light coming oh, through. we have. Right, let's take the last couple of danders up. It's not been quite the leisurely stroll <laughs> through the park no. the reviews led us to believe. I also saw a big pile of moose poop over there as well. That's no good, I see, you need to see a moose. I know. Everywhere, everywhere you drive here in Norway you just see the signs for um, moose, but no moose themselves. It's like the first time we went to Scotland, around every corner there was a whole herd of deer. We saw one in somebody's garden once yeah. and I leant on the horn and scared it away. <laughs> <laughs> She's not even lying. Well, here we are at the top. Yay! Welcome! One, oh. two, three. Good job. Well done, you. Next up, the Seven Sisters, eh? Oh. <laughs> right, well, we'll enjoy, well, I'll now enjoy a little feast of nuts. <laughs> we'll spend a little bit of time up in the top and then we shall wander back down to the van. We might stay in the car park here. We're parked a little bit jaunty at the moment, but maybe when the cars move out, we might stay here, so. Where was the moose poop? Over there somewhere. Oh. Right, nuts time. See you at the bottom. So I, for the last couple of days, I've been feeling a little bit homesick, a bit lonely, um, and the weather wasn't forecast to be very good. So we thought for a change, we'd have a more normal type of day. <laughs> so yeah, so we've actually just been down to the swimming pool. Um, really nice actually, quite expensive for non-Norwegians. Yeah, it worked out I think almost £10 each um, and we didn't actually do any swimming. I think I did about 10 strokes, uh, uh, but... <laughs> we did go down a water slide. Three which, times, which and, was brilliant fun. And they had a steam room. And there was a sauna. Now the sauna was supposed to be nice and relaxing and it was kind of relaxing and I closed my eyes and opened them again and Nicola had gone and in her place was about 25 toddlers all just staring at me. So it wasn't as relaxing as we had hoped, but it was still nice to do. And of course we get access, access to the showers. Am I allowed to correct you there? You said sauna, it was a jacuzzi. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be a normal day and we're having a normal day today if I didn't correct it. True that. And then in about, we've just driven back out of the town again and in about two hours time, I'm gonna head back down again because we have booked tickets to go see Indiana Jones. Yay! I'm actually even wearing like normal civvy clothes and wearing jeans and everything. I haven't worn long jeans in quite a few months. But and yeah. one, one interesting thing actually, I asked in the, um, it's like a civic complex thing, so they've got lots of different things there, and I asked about the parking. And luckily the girl said to me, parking on Sunday is free. 
So yeah. even though a lot of the car parks had time limits and machines there, it actually is free to park on Sundays. So that's quite useful to know. But we just thought because we want to make some tea, we'll come back out into yeah. the into the um, wild, cook up, and then head down for the cinema. And we might have to go back a few minutes early. And why is that, Nigel? Oh yeah, I've left my swimming trunks. <laughs> now our exploring the Hegland coast was only supposed to be over one blog, but we're only halfway up it. So part two will be coming again in a few days time but it is absolutely stunning and we are so so glad that we took the decision to travel slowly get onto the coastal road and start to explore it because it's it's beautiful and it's definitely less busy than the other areas yeah. which has been nice and um, loads of park ups loads of park ups yeah, with really good loos and you know just it's just fantastic yeah. really really welcome in for camper vans just wonderful and i think i heard a moose no. Last night. That was my stomach. Speaking of which, I think I have a coffee in the back ready, ready for me. Right, guys. Well, once again, thanks a lot for following along on this little bimble up through Norway. And as I said, we'll catch up next time further up the coast as we continue and complete, in fact, the, I won't even try to pronounce it. It begins with K, but it's the Hegeland coastline here <laughs> in Norway. And if you're in this area, don't skip it. Come here. It's beautiful. Right, guys. Thanks for following along. And until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.